It was dinner time when we were all sitting down and I answered the phone and it was a call from jail and it was OJ. I don't know who put that out there, but whoever put that out there, I guess it's like the Donald Sink. Can't trust the media. It appears that the man may have struggled to openly discuss his reality because acknowledging it has always been challenging for him. There are controversial celebrities, and then there is O.J. Simpson. The former athlete needs no introduction. Even those unfamiliar with his football career will recognize him from his numerous news appearances. He took controversy to new levels after becoming infamous for certain incidents in his life. Recently, he died in a manner that deeply saddened his family. Yet, even in death, Simpson continues to dominate trend lists, possibly due to his eerie final message before the year changed. Such statements have left people perplexed about what he might have disclosed, because believe me, this man was involved in a lot. Whatever is keeping his name on people's lips must be significant. Despite the darkness of his path, few can match O.J. Simpson's level of success in the industry. This man was a multifaceted celebrity, achieving fame in sports, film, and music. And for years, he was also a frequent subject of various comedic shows. Among all the aspects associated with his name, it's the controversies he encountered that have remained most memorable. Currently, the focus is shifting to how his health might not have been as he had previously claimed. Generally, celebrities find it challenging to keep significant details hidden from the public for long, and O.J. Simpson's situation seems to be another instance of this. Even before his demise, there were rumors that he might have been facing serious health issues. However, such discussions often lose traction when the person in question has publicly claimed to be in good health. This was the case with O.J., but since his passing, more information has surfaced suggesting he may have downplayed his actual health conditions. Now, new questions are emerging due to these revelations about what was really happening with him, and perhaps even more concerning, what other aspects of his life the controversial athlete might have also minimized. Like many aspects of his life, the details surrounding his name are full of twists that can be perplexing. Yet a thorough examination of his life over the years might shed some light on why he chose to handle his alleged health crisis in the way he did. Regardless of public opinion about O.J. Simpson, his passing has been hard for many to come to terms with, especially his close friends and family. They have publicly addressed his death, stating, on April 10th, our father, Ornthal James Simpson, lost his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this transitional time. His family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace, according to a statement from his family. Remember when I mentioned that there had been talk of this illness well before it became the likely cause of his death? There's more to the story. Two months before O.J. Simpson passed away at the age of 76, he posted a video about his health on X, formerly known as Twitter, reassuring his fans that he was doing well. Hey, let me take a moment to say thank you to all the people who reached out to me, Simpson said in the video, which was recorded before the 2024 Super Bowl in Las Vegas. My health is good. I mean, I'm dealing with some issues, but hey, I think I'm just about over it, and I'll be back on that golf course hopefully in a couple of weeks. In the video, the former football player added, but it was very nice hearing from you and those good positive words. Thank you. Two days before posting this video in February, Simpson addressed a report by WPLG that claimed he was in hospice care for prostate cancer. Media outlets sought comments from Simpson's representative. Hey, X World, hospice? You talking about hospice? No, I'm not in any hospice. I don't know who put that out there, Simpson clarified on X, adding, you can't trust the media. He also mentioned that he was in Las Vegas and would be hosting a ton of friends for the Super Bowl. In May 2023, Simpson first disclosed on X that he had completed treatment for an unspecified type of cancer. Known as the juice, Simpson had a storied career, breaking records as a college and professional football player. He further expanded his fame and fortune as a sportscaster, a movie and television actor, and as a corporate spokesman, most notably for Hertz rental cars. Everything changed on June 12, 1994, when Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman were brutally emmed outside her home in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles. Within days, the police announced their intention to arrest the former football star for the M's. Five days later, 95 million Americans watched as Simpson's white Ford Bronco driven by his longtime friend Al Cowlings, and with Simpson in the back seat holding a hand and threatening to end his life, led police on a 60-mile low-speed chase through Los Angeles that lasted about two hours. To understand what actually happened to him, let's examine his early life. Orenthal James Simpson 
born on July 9, 1947 in San Francisco, California, was named after a French actor admired by his aunt. He faced health challenges early on. At the age of two, Simpson developed rickets, which made him pigeon-toed and bow-legged. He wore a pair of shoes connected by an iron bar for several hours daily until the age of five. However, his life took a significant turn for the better less than a decade later as his exceptional football skills began to capture widespread attention. It turns out this was just one of the many highs and lows that his life would encompass. By the age of 19, the star athlete O.J. Simpson had married his high school sweetheart, Margaret Whitley, who was 18 at the time. Their wedding took place in June 1967, and they went on to have three children together, Arnell, Jason, and Aaron. While still actively playing football, Simpson began to explore acting, landing a notable role in the film The Klansman, where he portrayed a man wrongly accused of M by the police, a situation that would later echo in his own life. In March 1979, Simpson and Margaret divorced. Tragedy struck the family five months later when Aaron, their youngest child, drowned in the family swimming pool shortly before her second birthday. Around this time, Simpson had already begun a relationship with Nicole Brown, an 18-year-old blonde waitress. Less than a year later, they were living together. The year 1979 also marked significant transitions for Simpson. Alongside his divorce and the loss of his daughter, he decided to retire from football. Off the gridiron, Simpson continued to find success in front of the camera, earning acclaim for his charisma and good looks. Many regarded him as a personality that transcended sports, class, and race. He worked as a sportscaster for NBC and appeared in various movies, notably his Hertz commercials, where he showcased agility by leaping over luggage and dodging passengers, gained considerable popularity during this period. He stood out as one of the few men with such widespread appeal. In 1985, Simpson and Nicole Brown married and they had two children together. However, their marriage was marked by turmoil, with police responding to incidents at the couple's residence on multiple occasions, notably after a New Year's Eve party in 1989. During one such incident, Simpson ate his wife to the extent that she required hospitalization. Distressed, she ran towards the officers, exclaiming, he's going to K me, he's going to K me. However, it appears that the police weren't the only people she turned to for help, as she reportedly also confided in her friend Chris Jenner about the situation. Photographs taken during that period, which were later presented at Simpson's M trial, depicted Nicole Brown Simpson's severely bruised face. According to police records, Simpson remarked to the responding officers, the police have been out here here eight times before, and now you're going to arrest me for this? Simpson entered a plea of no contest to spousal battery, later asserting, I did not plead no contest for any other reason but to protect our privacy and was advised it would end the press hype. Denise, Nicole's sister, testified that the A on that occasion was not isolated, stating that it was neither the first nor the last time Nicole had been subjected to violence by her husband. The couple officially divorced in 1992 after seven years of marriage despite an unsuccessful attempt at reconciliation. They maintained contact, and their relationship continued to be tumultuous. In a deposition for the civil trial in 1997, Simpson admitted to causing harm to Nicole, stating, I take total responsibility. Shortly before midnight on June 12, 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson's dog led a neighbor to the horrific discovery of the bloodied bodies of Brown Simpson and her friend, Ron Goldman. The victims had been, been slashed, left on the pathway to Nicole Brown Simpson's Brentwood condominium. Within four hours of the discovery, Simpson checked into a hotel near Chicago's airport, having flown there just before midnight for a scheduled promotional engagement. Upon being contacted by local police, he promptly returned to Los Angeles. Upon his return, the police, considering him a suspect, handcuffed Simpson for questioning, but later released him. Five days later, Simpson agreed to surrender to face M charges, but he failed to appear, leading to his declaration as a fugitive at a news conference. During this conference, his friend Robert Kardashian read what he described as a suicide letter. Shortly afterward, Simpson was spotted in his white Ford Bronco, allegedly holding a gun to his head, AC Cowlings. Simpson's childhood friend and former teammate drove the Bronco, leading a convoy of squad cars on a 60-mile low-speed chase across Southern California. The spectacle turned into a televised event in car chase, obsessed Los Angeles, drawing crowds of onlookers cheering as the Bronco passed. Ultimately, Simpson surrendered to the police at his home, 
Simpson vehemently declared his innocence, pleading 100% not guilty. To bolster his defense, he assembled a formidable legal team, often referred to as the Dream Team, composed of renowned local and national lawyers. This team included civil rights attorney Johnny Cochran, star defense attorneys F. Lee Bailey and Alan Dershowitz, and DNA expert Barry Sheck. Notably, Robert Kardashian, a friend of Simpson and father of the Kardashian sisters, was also part of the legal defense. The former sportsman was later acquitted of the double M charges, but 13 years to the day after his acquittal, a Las Vegas jury found him guilty on different charges. Simpson was convicted of armed robbery and 10 other charges. He claimed he was attempting to retrieve his stolen property from two sports memorabilia dealers, Bruce Fromong and Alfred Beardsley. Although Simpson himself was unarmed, at least two of his associates carried weapons during the confrontation. The planning, the actual raid, and the subsequent police response were secretly recorded by another individual involved. In the recorded audio, Simpson can be heard shouting, don't let nobody out of here. The recordings also captured responding officers, expressing determination to bring charges against Simpson in Nevada if California couldn't. All of this evidence was presented during Simpson's Nevada criminal trial. These tumultuous stories make it easy to see why he represents so many different things to so many different people. While some like Caitlyn Jenner might have mixed feelings about his passing, others might miss him for the joy he brought as a sportsman. However, it seems those who do not miss him might outnumber those who do. One person sharing Caitlin's perspective wrote, I wish no ill will towards anybody. This was a waste of humanity who got away with double M. Bye. It looks like even in passing, Simpson may not be able to escape the narrative about his history. Who knows, maybe time will change the hearts of people, or maybe not.